It took another couple of weeks to finish the concrete roof tile. Our crew had a lot of cutting to do for the valleys and the dormers, which took a little longer than it would have on a simpler roof. Our masons also finished the outside field stone work, capping off the chimney. And that turned out to be a striking addition to the cabin. Well, Tim and Mike will be back later on in the week to keep working on the fireplace here inside. I'll tell you, we are really happy with the way this field stone is turning out. Right now we have a little fire going in here to help temper the masonry. And all the framing on the first floor is done, so we moved ahead with the paneling. Now we're using 1x6 tongue and groove knotty pine. And we're taking it up as far as a slip joint here, which again helps protect the wall when the logs start settling. Later on we'll cover up that gap with a piece of trim. Upstairs, the framing's all done, and the plumbing and the electrical runs are all finished. Now in the bathroom, we used stud wall to run the vent pipes up to the ceiling so we didn't have to cut away any logs. Now these are for the toilet and the bath and the fixtures downstairs. And they all converge into this three inch PVC pipe, which then turns the corner. From here, it goes up this wall where it merges with the vanity vent. And then the whole thing goes up through the roof to vent outside. We cut through the ceiling boards, the insulation, and the plywood to let the vent through. Roofers provided watertight flashing and cut the concrete tiles to fit. We've also gotten the tub in and hooked up its drain. Now this one is obviously less than full size, which is actually a better fit up here where floor space is at a premium. Here in the bedroom, we did some paneling once we were done with the framing. Now we incorporated our slip joints in here, but what's interesting is we extended this wall all the way up to the peak. And we did that by cutting 2x4s at the angle of the roof and then nailing this extension to 2x4s we have attached to the ceiling. We're doing the bedrooms in the same 1x6 knotty pine that we used in the kitchen. And we still got a ways to go, so we're going to get back to work. Here's another one for you. Now we're starting to work our way up from the bottom. We've allowed 3 quarters of an inch for the finished floor. Now we're putting the paneling up perpendicular to the studs here, so we're forming these horizontal seams. And the paneling goes in groove side down, so this groove goes over this tongue here. Then we install this one by here in the corner to give us a nice tight fit. Nailing through the tongue into the studs, here's the board. And we keep the nails high so that the groove of the next board hides their heads. of these boards slip into the notches that we cut where the stud wall joins the log wall. So this gives us a smooth transition from the paneling to the log wall. There we go. To secure the end, we nail into the studs, but not to the log, which will create problems with settling. The stud is nailed to the log, but through slotted holes, which will accommodate log settling. We're getting closer to the peak as we move up the wall here. Some of these cuts are getting a little more difficult as we're running into the slope of the roof. And we're finding that we have to scribe some of the paneling here to match the contour of the purlins. We also cut in a shallow groove here with a chainsaw so the paneling will fit right in there. together the section and cut out the back groove of our bottom board here. It's really about the only way to get this up here. So we slide it up like so. And then with this done, we can go ahead and start paneling the bathroom. It took us most of the day to finish off the paneling, but that gave us some time to do a couple of other projects. For instance, we nail up some backer board around the tub here, and we seal the joints with tape and thin set mortar. The nice thing about backer board is, is that it provides a real solid surface for ceramic tile. It doesn't deteriorate when it gets wet. You all done there? Yeah, I'll give you some room. For our tile floor here, we'll be pouring a mortar bed, which is a lot easier to level out than backer board. We have 
build herself down here on the floor to protect the plywood from water, and this mesh will help strengthen the overall floor. Now we'll be pouring this floor the same depth as our finished floor out here in the hallway. <laughs> As an A-tile project, we trawl the mud under the mesh and pack it down firmly. Now this is a combination of Portland cement, water, and sand. And we're spreading it right up to the logs. The logs will shrink as they dry, pulling away from the mortar and creating a small gap. That shouldn't be a problem on the edge here, but there won't be any traffic. Say, we still want to get that mud bed down on the first floor bathroom, right? Oh yeah. Okay, yep. I'll get going on that. 